Good morning and welcome to our worship service here with St. Mark's Lutheran Church of Waukegan. It's always a joy to see each and every one of you online, whether you are a regular member or a first-time visitor with us. This morning, we gather here to celebrate our theme of Abide. As we enter into this time of worship and reflection, I encourage you to take a moment to reflect on what it means to abide in Christ. Abiding means to remain or stay in a particular place, but it also means to be rooted and grounded in Christ. And as we abide in him, we are strengthened and sustained by his love, grace, and mercy. So this morning we pray that this service will be a time of deepening our faith, a time of connecting with one another, and a time of encountering God's presence in a powerful way. May we all leave here feeling refreshed and renewed and ready to continue abiding in Christ throughout the week ahead. Thank you for being a part of this community of believers and let us worship our Lord together in spirit and in truth. Now we approach God in confession and receive forgiveness. In an ELCA Lutheran worship service, confession and forgiveness is an important part of our worship service. Confession means admitting our mistakes and asking for forgiveness from God and from others. After confessing, we remind ourselves of God's forgiveness, love, and grace. And Lutherans emphasize that we can't earn salvation through our own efforts or good deeds. It's only through God's grace. And confession and forgiveness remind us of our need for God's love and forgiveness through Jesus Christ. We'll say the bolded parts together this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all the saints, God of all the sinners, hear our prayer. We would be saint-like, holy, good, patient, and loving, but we end up feeling more like sinners, full of failures of morality, selfish, mean. Perhaps you see us simply as human, as beloved, flawed, and trying and failing and succeeding. In all of this, forgive the wrong that we have done and bless the good we have accomplished. Keep on loving us and helping us and molding us more and more into the image of Christ, in whose name we pray this morning. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. The love of God is beyond measure, and you are included in that love. Know that you are forgiven and thus freed to love and to serve. Alleluia. Amen.
This morning, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And this morning, from wherever you may be tuned into from uh, with us, the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us pray together. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Isaiah 51 Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only one man, and I blessed him and made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the, of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her. Thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. Instruction will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way, and my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment and its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. Word of the Lord, word of life. Thanks be to God. We are in a series called All the Big Questions, where we're looking at the Gospel of John to help us look at some of the biggest questions ever asked. Questions like, does God exist? If God exists, what is God like? What is the meaning and purpose of life? What happens to us after we die? And can we have a relationship with God? Can we connect with God? So this morning, I'm going to read a passage from John, and then we'll unpack the question that it's looking at. Please sing with us our gospel acclamation. Today's Holy Gospel comes to us from John. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So how do you get in and stay in tune with God, connected with God? Well, Jesus doesn't leave us in the dark. Jesus tells us to abide. Abide, to abide, is a verb. It's active. Abiding in Christ is uh, not a feeling or a belief, but it is something we do. It means to remain or stay and entails far more than the idea of continued belief in our Savior. It's a conscious choice. 
to grow in our relationship with Jesus by following God's commands. It's making yourself a part of something bigger by how you live your life. They will know we are Christians by our love. Here's your history lesson for today. The Gospel of John's audience was obsessed with lineage, where and who you came from. Who your father was determined your status, your starting place on the honor scale. If your family had a strong lineage and legacy and name, your starting point in society was higher than someone whose family or house is lower or, or maybe had been marked by shame. The way we think of generational wealth as a starting point, you might think of lineage as a starting point. Even today, it's not uncommon when you meet someone in the Middle East to be asked, where are you from and who is your father? Who, who are your people? And this is why so many of the books of the Bible start with a long list in, of lineage, of names. They're trying to prove to the listener that the person or group being described is honorable enough to be listened to. Like, you should listen to Jesus because he is from the line of your forefathers, Abraham, David, and Elijah. In our passage, Jesus knows this honor scale and talks about the idea and uses this idea of vine and branches. You see, some of the Pharisees and Sadducees, some of the upper echelon of Jewish society, regaled and cherished their birth-given status as God's chosen people through their lineage. They thought they were religiously safe in God's eyes simply because of what family they were born in. And I suppose you could see how they got there. They were Levites, members of the Hebrew tribe of Levi, which provided assistance to the priests in the worship of the Jewish temple, in the Jewish temple. It was a place of very high status and honor. And so Jesus knows this and he does what he does best and uses an analogy to flip the script and enter a new way of thinking in. He uses the word abide and he suggests that anyone can be a part of his new kingdom. They just need to they just need to follow God. And that if you are truly grafted into the life God has intended, if you are abiding with God, you will bear fruit. That it will be evident that you are a part of God's kingdom by what kind of person you are. Not by your tribe, your last name, or whose house you were born in, but by the fruit your life produces, the health of your spiritual connection with God. And because healthy plants produce fruit. A few years ago, my wife had a dream. Her dream was that she could have an indoor lemon tree all the way up here in the Midwest. She had visions of waking up on a sunny morning, walking downstairs and selecting one of the, a plethora of freshly grown lemons from a bountiful lemon tree in our dining room. Branches heavy from an overabundance of fruit. Well, I bought into this dream. I was suckered into this dream of a lemon tree with visions of an abundance of freshly grown lemons. And I bought her a very expensive Meyer lemon tree for her birthday one year. It even, it even had tiny lemons already growing. Almost a foretelling of the bountiful harvest to come. Our future was bright. And we followed the instructions, put the tree in the sunniest spot in our house next to the sliding glass door in our dining room. We watered it according to the schedule in the tiny instruction book it came with and gave it plant food and most importantly, gave it love. I would even haul this sucker in and out of the house to get fresh air when the weather was warm and nice. And all we had to do was wait, wait for all of our lemons to grow. So we waited, and waited, and waited, and, and still no fruit. Our original tiny lemons fell off, and we mused that surely this was like baby teeth. This was to make room for the big ones to grow. Almost a year passed, and like Abraham and Sarah awaiting their firstborn, we continued to wait in faith. And we watered according to schedule, gave it sunlight, and most importantly, love. But alas... No lemons, and, well, truth be told, it looked worse than when we first bought it, even with all that love. 
And now every once in a while we would wake up in the morning and leaves, leaves would be missing. And I mean, not just fallen off, but mysteriously gone, like evaporated into thin air. Now, being a pastor, of course, I wondered, was God rapturing our lemon tree leaves uh, leaf by leaf to a better place? And then one afternoon, we witnessed the real reason for our lemon tree's demise. It had four paws and whiskers. It was a cat named Sam. Our fluffy orange boy had been casually and guilt-free nibbling off leaves one by one. Through no fault of its own, our lemon tree turned out to be, well, a lemon. It wasn't a healthy tree because it was a snack for an overly curious and always hungry fat orange cat. So we gave up and gave it a ceremonial burial in our backyard compost pit. And I know it's kind of sad, but to be honest, after almost a year of trying to help this tree grow... It was kind of a relief not to be burdened with the responsibility of keeping the darn thing alive. And I suppose we would have to humble ourselves and just buy lemons from Jewel, like the rest of the plebeians. And then a few weeks later, my mom showed up to our house at Shay's next birthday and, well, maybe you guessed it, with a brand new Meyer lemon tree because she had heard of the last one's demise. (laughs) Okay, super long lemon tree story with maybe not uh, a very clear point, but what is Jesus getting at with his plant analogy of the vine and the branches? That if you are truly grafted into the life God has intended, if you are abiding with God, if you are a healthy plant, you will bear fruit regardless of your lineage, your status, or your position. That cultural and societal status and honor had nothing to do with your kingdom status. That, that was all about being connected with Jesus. And Jesus doesn't care about your bank account, the church you go to, your family name, your ethnicity, your politics. Jesus wants to be connected to you in a very deep and real way. It's called abiding. So how do you know if you're abiding? If you're maintaining and growing your connection to God, you will, like a healthy lemon tree, bear fruit. If you keep God's commands, if you love and take care of people, if you're looking for broken things in this world to fix, if you if you see lost and hurt people and you are reaching out, if you're learning and growing to be more, more like Jesus, you will bear fruit. What is the fruit? Well, it's, it's more of the same. It's kind of exponential. Galatians 5.16 tells us the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Abiding with God, following God, produces more. Well, love. Love is exponential. Love produces more. Love. This, this had to really tee off the entitled Pharisees and Sadducees because this had nothing to do with what they based their cultural self-esteem or status in. I mean, I mean, Jesus is saying that anyone can be grafted into this new kingdom. It doesn't matter. Your address, your last name, your bloodline or lineage. You could be included. You could become a Christ in a Christian You could change your very identity and be included in Jesus' heritage, his his vine. Remember our audience, Hellenistic Jews, but, but also Hellenistic Greeks, Romans, Corinthians, Ephesians, Samaritans, all people that might assume that based on their lineage and birthline that they would not be included in the Jewish Messiah's new kingdom. And yet... Jesus is saying that they are. So God is inclusive to people that might not think that they qualify. People that at first glance might not be church people. I've heard this so many times from people that don't think that God wants people like them in church, that they wouldn't fit in with us uh, holy rollers. Colin, you don't know what I've done in my past, how hard I've had to struggle, how many times I've made the wrong choice. I, I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't think I'm good enough. Maybe, 
Maybe someday. I want to be very clear. Jesus is not asking this passage for behavioral perfection. I think he is preaching inclusion. Jesus isn't asking for behavioral perfection when he asks us, asks us to abide. I think he is preaching inclusion. Think of all the people that might not think that they are allowed to abide with us in God, but are, in fact, invited to experience God's love with us. LGBTQ plus individuals are invited to be a part of God's church as God's love is inclusive and embraces every kind of person. People with disabilities are welcome in God's church as everyone is valued and respected for who they are. Individuals who have experienced addiction or substance abuse are encouraged to join God's church where they will find compassion and support. People from diverse cultural and religious backgrounds are invited to be a part of God's church, where diversity is celebrated and appreciated. Those who have been incarcerated or have a criminal record are welcome in God's church, as forgiveness and second chances, second chances are central to what Jesus teaches. People who have experienced homelessness and poverty are invited to be a part of God's church, where they will find a community that cares for their needs. Those who struggle with mental health challenges are welcomed in Jesus' church, where they will find empathy and support. Individuals who have experienced trauma or abuse are invited to be a part of God's church, where we pray and hope they will find healing. People who do not conform to traditional gender norms and expressions are embraced in God's church, where everyone is created in God's image and loved unconditionally. Those who have struggled with infertility or pregnancy loss are invited to be a part of God's church where they will find comfort and solidarity in a community that values all of life's experiences. Jesus is saying in this passage that just like Greeks and Romans, Corinthians and Ephesians and Samaritans, everyone is now included in God's kingdom. Everyone that wants to be in can be. Everybody. No exceptions. Jesus has swung the doors to the kingdom as wide as they can be and said everybody can come in. And all that Jesus asks is that you abide, that you choose to remain in him, that you follow his commands to love your neighbor as yourself and to love God with your heart, your soul, and your mind. So this morning, if you're wondering if you qualify to be in God's kingdom, I want to make it clear you do. That's our gospel for today, our good news. Jesus wants you to know that you are already a part of a wonderful family of people doing their best to be better and more loving. And Jesus doesn't care about your past or whether or not you think you qualify, that you are in fact a part of God's family and all we need to do is abide. So how do you know if you're on track? How do you know, how do you measure if you are abiding well, you know you're on track if you're becoming a more loving person. If you're finding broken things in this world and trying your best to fix them. It's not complex to abide. But sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to love people that are difficult. Hard to stop what you're doing for someone else. Hard to give up some of what you have for others in need. Hard not to take that opportunity to tear someone down when you're given that chance. Hard to change your view on something you've held for most of your life. Hard not to get your way all the time. But to abide, to remain in the vine, this is the life that God calls us to. It is inclusive. It is humble. It's also a better way to do life. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I've said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy, your joy may be complete. Let us pray together. We come before you this morning with hearts full of gratitude and thanksgiving for the gift of life and the opportunity to witness yet another beautiful day. We ask that your presence fills us with joy and peace that passes all understanding, making our joy complete. 
We pray that you grant us the strength to abide in your love and trust in your unfailing promises. Lord, we humbly ask that you shine your light on every area of our lives that needs uh, maybe a little bit of pruning. Help us to be more loving, kind, and compassionate towards one another, just as you have commanded us. We also ask that you grant us the courage and boldness to reach out to those around us who are hurting, lonely, and may be in need of your love. May we be the vessels of your love, spreading your grace and mercy to every kind of person that crosses our paths. And lastly, we pray for our church, that it may be a safe haven for all who seek refuge in your love. May it be a place where people of all backgrounds and walks of life feel welcomed and loved, just as they are. May your love and grace flow freely in our midst, transforming lives and bringing hope to the hopeless. We ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
This morning, let us say our Apostles' Creed together, where we are reminded of our connection to the legacy of faith before us and our sisters and brothers in faith around the world. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he had descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now come to prayers of intercession where we pray for the world, our country, our community, our church, and ourselves. Each prayer is read by a leader, and then we will all affirm our agreement with that prayer by saying together, your mercy is great. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Ever-present God, you make yourself known to the breaking of the bread and in the bonds of community. Reveal yourself to us in the faces of all we meet. Strengthened by your body and blood, let us boldly live out our good news. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. As we know you in the breaking of the bread, we know you in the grains of the field and the flowing waters. Care for the earth you lovingly create. Strengthen those who safeguard threatened lands and water. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You are the authority to whom we dedicate our lives. Help us keep the needs of those most vulnerable at the forefront of our community. Move us to care for any who are disregarded or oppressed. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Mothering God, you feed and comfort those who hunger. Open the hearts of those who hoard resources and lead them to share your abundance. We pray for anyone hungering for your comforting presence this day. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You pour out your love to those who are oppressed. Support and comfort anyone who is marginalized by gender or sexuality and those whose stories are not believed. Form this community to listen faithfully and speak honestly in our ministry together. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We remember with thanksgiving all your beloved saints, as you have raised them to eternal life, abide with us in your promise of resurrection. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, Amen. A few announcements this morning. Thank you for the help with our Earth Day roadside cleanup. And then we want to talk a little bit about communion. Just a heads up, we're starting, to process, starting the process of thinking through our next steps and how to do communion. And we've heard from quite a few folks that are yearning for something different as the pandemic puts distance in the rear view mirror. But as we think through it, know that it is a, a little bit complex and we're asking for a large dose of patience and understanding as we do. And here's a few reasons why. Here's some of our biggest concerns. Uh, number one, safety. While we would like to say the lion's share of the pandemic is over, we still have a responsibility to be uh, thoughtful and as safe as possible. And for our new visitors, if it doesn't appear safe well then, and well thought out, then and people might be a little hesitant to join in. Number two, everyone's all over the map and how they feel about it. I've talked to upwards of about 50 people uh, about communion over the last couple of months, and everyone is, is all over the place in their comfort levels. So we need to be aware of that moving forward. We need to make sure that whatever we try next is comfortable for everyone. And we need to recognize that some folks have immunity issues that others do not. So it's got to be safe and comfortable. 
Also, complexity and approachability for newcomers. Church is hard enough to uh, go to th for the first time, and you add in communion, and it can get a little intimidating. And uh, it's a wonderful thing. We are growing, uh, but we need to make sure that communion uh, makes sense and is not overly complex. Whatever we come up with needs to be uh, appear and be safe, be approachable for everyone, no matter their level of comfort. It needs to be simple and approachable for every new person that comes here. Now, if you have thoughts or questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I would love to chat and make sure that we're all on the same page moving forward. And whatever we come up with, know that we are try it for a few months and then we may need to reevaluate uh, as the world shifts and changes and people's comfort levels adjust as well. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now for our blessing. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. You can fix feet to feed an army But with no friends there's no need to celebrate Now go in peace, serve the risen one, thanks be to God.